righty, welcome back. Uh, Dow just middling around here on a terrific Tuesday edition of Liquid Lunch on Biz TV, uh, Biz Talk Radio, and uh, the Money Station out in Oregon. Uh, there is so much going on related to the markets now that that it's kind of scary because uh, I've been saying this since December that the the news climate is so volatile that you don't know where the next piece of news is coming, and then you don't know uh, basically where it's coming from. If it's real news, if it's fake news, if it's news the uh, social media companies don't want you to hear, um, then you're not going to hear about it. And um, for those of you out there who never heard of the Lincoln Project, this is a f bunch of former Never Trumpers who teamed up to fleece America to run anti-Trump campaigns. These uh, these guys from the Lincoln Project are now saying they're going to go out and cancel any attorneys that represent Parler. So anybody that's thinking about investing in existing social media companies, I would say be very careful. Okay. Um, yesterday, for those of you out there who uh, give a listen on what I'm talking about, I mentioned uh, yesterday that I thought Overstock.com, uh, the online e-commerce company in which I am a shareholder, I'm not an insider, I don't know any non-public information, um, but I know that they have been a significant benefactor of the pandemic and people doing more online buying. I know firsthand because I was part of a team inside of Overstock that came up with the thought processes around their cryptocurrency and their token. Um, I know they have tremendous value to be unlocked in their uh, alternative subsidiaries like T0 that you might want to check out. It's one of the only U.S. regulated exchanges where you can uh, buy cryptocurrencies and uh, do it legally. Um, but Overstock.com uh, up seven dollars today and yesterday when i was talking about it, it was like 51 bucks and uh coming into this hour today 58.50 on overstock.com on uh, fairly light volume three million shares for overstock as i mentioned yesterday i thought bitcoin had a uh, support level at 30,000 i was hoping it didn't bust below 30,000 it just nibbled into the 30s but kind of settled in to a support level at 31,000 and uh, anyone that took a look at it yesterday and thought there was a buying opportunity today uh, coming into the uh, first hour of a terrific Tuesday, uh, Bitcoin at 35000 so up uh, 8% since we talked about it yesterday. And um, InvestView, which is uh, my company, I'm an advisor to the company, uh, highly focused on investor education. You can check out InvestView for some uh, really affordable uh, monthly subscription to get all the investor education you ever wanted and more. Um, all the uh, shrimp you can eat, all the beer, wine, and sangria you can drink. It's the Beefsteak Charlies of uh, investor education. But um, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there to get your head around, you know, uh, early beginner uh, crypto for dummies type stuff if you want to start learning and educating yourself. And there's a lot of great news there. But uh, invest you uh, as we come through this first hour at uh, 19 cents in uh, yesterday. I think it was around 20 or 21. So a uh, little selling pressure because the uh, price does have a correlation to Bitcoin at 40000 uh, The stock was $0.22 cents and at 35000 where it is now. Um, it looks like it's a little off, but still uh, very nicely done from a few weeks ago when the stock was two cents. So um, we'll bring you all through all that and more. But uh, one of the things I want to talk about on the uh, financial front is when, you know, you're thinking about, well, do I invest in Facebook or Apple? Because they're going to be really competitive. You know, no, they're killing their competition, which in America, that's kind of like the opposite of capitalism when you allow uh, large behemoth companies to get so big. You know, the banks were too big to fail, remember? So we had to save all the banks. Obama printed trillions and trillions of dollars to bail out Wall Street, okay? Now the media companies are too big to beat. They can't be beat, it's starting to look like. And then... You know, you start looking for a pattern in there. Like, you know, where are all these companies from? They're all, they're all in Silicon Valley, in San Francisco. 
And uh, where's Nancy Pelosi from? Well, she's from San Francisco. And uh, where, where's Kamala Harris? Well, she's the senator from California. Um, so you start thinking, well, wait, could, uh, could that be associated? I mean, Hunter Biden's laptop comes out and uh, Jack Dorsey, who in my view should be jailed, um, decides that he's going to suppress that news. And it's news. And it turns out that it was true that there is an investigation and there is a whole bunch of bad stuff on Hunter's laptop. And, you know, Jack Dorsey is now calling balls and strikes on what he wants you to hear as news. So, yeah, when um, the A number one guy on your whole platform, 88 million followers, leaves, um, you got to be thinking he's going to come up with another plan. And 88 million people, plus real liberals, liberals with an L, like real civil libertarians, they're going to leave too if there's a fair, clean, and objective alternative. Because this is not what America, even liberals don't want private companies infringing on the free speech of Americans, just like they don't want free assembly. And, they, they, you know, they don't want the government's hands in women's wombs and they don't want the government in your bedrooms. And they um, in, in the Midwest, in the flyover country, they say the government, they keep your hands off my lands. OK, those are liberal, libertarian type things. And this just goes against everything. Now, uh, Ava, uh, GFX1, uh, now take a look at this. If you want to start putting some pieces together and figuring out if you want to invest in these big tech companies, because you could see there's a technocracy um, happening before us. They're basically running the country. And Nancy Pelosi and others, Kamala Harris, they're running point in Washington. So um, now let's take a look at this. This is, uh, these are the disclosed ones, okay, of owners of the companies, employee, family, and PAC donations. So let's take a look. Google, um, $4 million to Biden, 100000 to Trump. Okay, so 40 times. Uh, Microsoft, 2.4 million, 247,000. 10 times. Amazon, 2.2 million. Trump, 260,000. 10 times, basically 9.5. Uh, Apple, 1.7 million. Uh, Trump, 100,000. 17 times. Uh, and Facebook, 1.5 million with, against 40, uh, you know, just over 30 times the amount of money. So, and that's from the Center for Responsive Politics. They look into this stuff. There's all kinds of other packs, and we know that Mark Zuckerberg spent $400 million through, you know, a couple of shadow um, daisy chain organizations that got into putting um, drop boxes out in the streets. They spent $400 million in swing states to make sure there were unmanned drop boxes installed all around the swing states and the blue cities, but I digress. Um, and in any event, the money that Silicon Valley poured into this campaign, specifically to get Joe Biden in, is now telling us there is a pattern. They suppressed the news about Joe Biden's son, okay? They suppressed it. We got to get Biden in. Well, he needs money. Okay, let's send him in some money. And then, uh, well, Mark and Jack and everyone, let's do this other around the bend organization where we can really load up, load up to get out the vote. So private money in these companies, and now you understand what the intent is, was pushed into all the swing states um, to make sure that Joe Biden was the president, which is really scary if you think about it. And anywhere from 10 to 40 times the money went from all the fangs they call them the fangs, Facebook, Apple, uh, Netflix, Google, you know, the fangs. Uh, all that money, and Netflix wasn't indicated in that particular chart, but that's a whole other story. Um, they actually gave like $100 million to Black Lives Matter on top of it, which should scare you and make you want to find another digital uh, streaming provider. But um, I would just say this. I have been building financial technology companies for years. I don't know spit about technology. I see problems, I conceptualize ideas, I architect them, I like to call myself an inventor, um, and then get smart people to put all the pieces of the puzzle together on the tech. I'm working on that. I'm working on it on a couple of fronts, which I'll bring you up to speed on, but I'll tell you this, it's not just me. 
some, you know, conservatives are smart and innovative too. Some of the smartest conservatives out there right now are pissed, okay? And you got to start looking for alternative opportunities um, to invest in American companies that don't want to infringe on your speech. So um, I'll talk to you more about alt investments and stuff, but there's a lot going on. We still got to talk about. Stick with me. Bill, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Bill Pepitone is going to join me in just a little bit, talk about defunding the police and how uh, that further helps uh, small, hurt small businesses. All that and more right here on a terrific Tuesday edition of Liquid Lunch. <laughs> 